again and welcome to Mance Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I, it's funny, I'm going to back up because I have this huge baggy t-shirt on. Um, this is week, I don't know what, of COVID shutdown. But um, I found, I went up to get dressed and I found this t-shirt that I bought at the beach and it says, wake up and live. And it's got like a beach thing on the back. And I usually oh. just throw it over. But I thought, oh, you know, how about that? That is a good attitude for today. Just wake up and live and try to be a better person and try to help people. And that's my new, you know, this is like people do yoga, people do medica- meditation. And Dan says, I'm an optimizer. I try to optimize data and relay it to the people who might not be getting it. And that's what I feel like I'm doing in my pastime because, you know, I have lots of things to do. I have a yard to take care of. I have home improvement projects I can work on. Um, I also seem to be spending at least an hour or two a day probably helping people understand what the problem with their unemployment claims are because there are crazy amounts of people filing for unemployment and New Hampshire's system can't handle it um, because it wasn't set up to do the things that we're asking it to do. And it is incredibly sad to watch people get so discouraged partially sometimes because of their own actions you know they don't give the right information or they do things wrong but it's not an easy system and then the federal government gets involved and that's a whole other layer of complication and what what to somebody seems like somebody actually said to me i don't know why governor sununu can't just pay everybody and go back and figure it out later and i'm like well oh, that's you you can't just pay everybody why not i like think everyone Lockdown, who's been told to stay at home should absolutely and I don't even think we should have to um, fill out any paperwork I think that they should take the onus on them well that's and, what the, uh, the twelve hundred dollar stimulus money will be just shows up someday I don't know some people got it I don't know I'm off the IRS doesn't like me Apparently, I'm not in their direct deposit system or some craziness. I don't know. Um, yeah, I still need to check what on is, that. What, be, we're going to be joined, hopefully, at some point by Will Infantine. Um, Will is on the School Charter Commission. He's a, um, I don't think he's ever served as an alderman, but don't quote me on that. But he is a former state rep, um, and he does understand how things are going. And he wanted, uh, he's going to fill us in about what's going on with the School Charter Commission. If he pops in, he's in a, on another Zoom meeting. Um, and actually, I spoke to uh, Representative Mark Warden from, mm-hmm. is that Ward 8, yep. right? This yep. morning, because um, I was just curious to find out what was going on with these yep. lawsuits. For our, for our viewers back home, they may recall that last year when we had the election, uh, the city election, we, uh, we had this new charter commission thing that was introduced. The backstory is it looks like it is a runaround around the Manchester tax cap yep. so that people would like to have taxing authority that would separate uh, what we're doing in the schools with you know what we do with you know the city in general with mm-hmm. our trash and our roads. And I really do hope uh, Joyce Craig takes this opportunity while everyone's not on the roads to go out and fill every pothole. Because I will also tell you, every pothole I hit until I'm allowed out of my house I am putting that down on the list too and taking some bennies off and taking some money off for that as well. <laughs> so, um, so the Charter Commission, uh, they, they, they messed up when they introduced it, right? So there right. was like, I mean, technicalities of writing, uh, you know. Badly different written laws. Like, hmm? Badly written law by Pat Long. Yeah, badly written law. And so uh, Representative Mark Warden wanted to actually become a candidate on the ballot. And he followed the letter of what was written in the law. That's and right. then they said, oh, you can't register that past what, you know, eons ago. And so he took them to court. Uh, the injunctive relief said that you can't because everyone had already, you know, printed the ballot yeah. and it was going forward. The judge, I think, you know, understandably, although possibly not rightly, but understandably, did um, did say, well, let's go forward with the election and then we'll let people sort of, right. you know, we'll figure uh, it out later. We'll figure it out afterwards. So now they're in the we'll figure it out afterwards phase of things. Yeah. So it's back in the lower court and that's kind of where it is now. I asked them you know do we even have a court date you know what's happening with that and of course with all the weirdness of the world right now right he said you know they're not quite sure when when that's going to happen well and 
um, I had talked, heard from Mark last week at the Manchester Republican Committee meeting, which we did on Zoom. Um, and I think, and Will was in, involved in that too, so that's why I'm hoping Will jumps on. I believe we're, um, the latest motion on the part of Mark Warden was to um, abolish the school charter commission because of the fact that Yes, there's nothing they could have done before because the ballots were already printed, but then the ballots were printed and they elected this commission that Mark Warden was not allowed to even run for. So he, how do you, you can't go back and make him whole. So their, mo their latest motion, if I understand it correctly, is to uh, just cancel it all. And if, I mean, and then if Pat Long wanted to do it again, they could because the law would still exist. Now, interestingly enough, um, there's a Senate bill, which as we know, the Senate and the House are not in session until May whenever. Again, they're, they're closed because, you know, COVID. Um, there's a Senate bill 423. The sponsors are Lou D'Alessandro, Kevin Kavanaugh, Donna Susi, and Rep Long, so all from Manchester. Um, and it says, this bill clarifies the timeline for declarations of candidacy of charter commission members. So what Which, it in my does, opinion, is is that is an admission that, they, that, that it, it wasn't was likely done exactly. and that they should invalidate the election. So what it does is it takes out that phrase that said, um, the, it, it reads, declarations of candidacy for the commission shall be filed as provided in RSA 669-19, except for that the following period, the filing period shall begin on, and it used to say, the fourth Wednesday before the election and end on the Friday of the following week, which is all, virtually impossible to, to do. And now it says it shall begin on the Wednesday immediately following the election. What? And co coinciding with the recount peri period pursuant to RSA 44C, the declarations. Uh, I think they're legally trying to backdoor it. They're actually I, like, well, if we were out was... of session right now, they're trying to be like, we wrote a new law, so therefore yeah. it's legal. And I'm um, going to tell you because you can tell I'm fighting mad. Like, if these kinds of things, if the courts are going to go, when you look at the plain language on documents, and everyone's just going, this doesn't matter anymore, then my question is, what law? Like, how is there a rule of law in this country right. anymore? Well, so yes, I agree, and I that was the gist of what I thought Will um, was saying too. Is that there's something this is all getting a little too fishy and weird, and then so you have the school charter commission that is meeting that nobody really knows because even like the budget. Did you know there was a budget hearing meeting last night? I read about it in today's Today, paper, but I didn't really know about cuttingly. it. I mean, mentioned that four people were on the call right, because and nobody I was like, knows. well, maybe that's because no one knew about it. Somehow we all know about all the emergency yes. stuff. Somehow people managed to send me, Tammy, let me ask you this. I got a voicemail on Friday. My cell phone is still a 917 phone number because yeah. uh, I never changed it. So it's a New York City phone number. Mm -hmm. So I got a push voicemail on Friday that started with, if you have a sore throat, cough, or fever, let me remind you, it is allergy season. You may have COVID. Really? And I was like, what? So they're calling the entire state of New York, millions and millions oh. of people, and telling them to be scared. Like, that just seems so, and I'm, it seems very like the reverse of what you would do in a true pandemic. Right. Like, I feel like you don't have to find patients in a pandemic. The patients will find you. That is pretty much by its very nature, the problem with something where you have a health crisis at that level. And when I heard that, I was just like, man, I don't know what's going on anymore, but this seems fishy to me. Well, and doesn't it seem like, cause I know a lot of, I, I don't have a ton of, I know some people who still live in New York city. Um, I have a, I'm from upstate New York, so I have a lot, I see a lot on my Facebook feed from people in New York. I'm not really following everything that's going on there, but I'm thinking first, those phone calls cost money. Even if the government's doing them, there's still a cost involved in that. And I, I do agree with you, like it is allergy season. And I, first of all, at this point, 
how is there anybody who doesn't know what the symptoms of COVID are? Like, are you or, getting or like, is there anyone in the world who doesn't know there's this thing going around? Right, that's what I, I mean. mean everybody I'm pretty knows. sure even the dudes in the Amazon forest know it right. this day. So if you're going to send out a message, I think I agree with what you were probably saying is I would think that the message would say, you know, if you are, if you have a fever, but if you've got a runny nose, because I read an article early, weeks ago and I remember thinking, okay, good, because I always have allergies. And you do start to get a little paranoid because you're like, okay, are these the symptoms? The nose thing, if it's in your nose, it's not COVID. The, the COVID thing is not a running nose, but it's like, once you know that you're like, oh, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Now, if I started running a fever, then maybe I would think about it because that seems to be the one, I mean, I think people could be running a fever without really thinking about it because people don't take their temperature every day. Um, but if I started to feel weird, I probably would find my thermometer and take my temperature and then I would monitor my situation. And if it seemed like I was getting worse, I'd probably call the doctor, you know, and so on and so forth. But I do think some of it, I mean, I know you and I might not 100% agree on the level of um, concern. I know you're concerned. I just don't think that we're looking at, I mean, and I'm okay with that because I I purposely have like, this is me with blinders trying not to let it consume me because it will. And then I then it will make me crazy and then everything else will fall apart. So, well, I, I, I think that's legitimate, but here's the thing. I think it's important for people to realize you can, as I am, like it's actually a, like a three-part Venn diagram, is I'm like, I'm concerned yeah. about the virus, and I'm right. concerned about the people who get sick and die, yeah. of course. But I'm also concerned about civil liberties and the over, you know, the overreach of the government. And then I'm very concerned because people seem to not understand that economic illiteracy also kills. Yeah. It also kills exponentially yeah. because if you don't understand that economics is life, those two things are absolutely intertwined. And for us to very cavalierly be like, I mean, people have spent the last three days calling me a murderer. I've gotten several yeah, death threats. You know, and I'm just like, but people, let's just put this in context. Right now, based on the reports I'm reading, and of course the media doesn't really report on this, so I don't blame the people for not you know, hearing our side or being like, Carla sounds a little crazy, but I'm like, you know, if they actually gave us balanced news and they said, here's this legitimate concern, yeah. but we should also worry about these things. If you look at the reports coming out from the UN, uh, they're saying hundreds of thousands of children are likely to die. Um, I read something yesterday that said 60,000 migrant workers cannot get in to plant the fields. Mm -hmm. If you do not plant the they fields, the stuff does not grow. If the stuff does not grow, you do not eat. So for people to be Uh oh, you muted. You muted. Sorry, did my sound That's go That's okay, because I was like, why can't I hear her? And then I'm like, oh, look, I can see a little mute thing. Sorry. <laughs> Play yeah, the yeah, field. phone call came in. I got to figure out like some of the technicalities. But anyway, so my point just being that we can't look at this thing isolated through one lens and just say right. this part matters, because of course it all matters. And right now we're talking about 20% of working Granite Staters, 20%, that's 125,000 people. That is the population of Manchester and Amherst together are currently unemployed. Right. And I think, you know, to your point earlier, yes, most of them or many of them will get their jobs back, but you know what? Not all of them. Not all of them. I know several, several people who have permanently gone out of business. Well, and even and companies that will reopen, you know, like there's going to be, um, you know, some companies are going to, this is going to cause them to struggle and, you know, because they have to rebuild and some, some businesses, I mean, it, it it's a crazy but here's thing. Here's the thing. I, I would like businesses to naturally go out of business. Yeah. So what we also have here, right, is they've pretty much, if you look at what happened with that PPP small business loans yeah. um, thing, 
all the big businesses got bailed out. Right. It's a repeat of 2008. Once again, here we are, the middle class of America being squeezed by these two interests, the, the, the money corporate interests on this side and the, you know, the, the progressive socialists on this side. What about us in the middle? Like who's looking after us? Like we are, but no one seems to care about that. Um. I forgot to put my timer on, so I'm kind of watching where we are. We've probably got at least, I think, 15 minutes left, and I see that Will is waiting. So I'm going to bring on Will in for time so he can fill us in on the Charter Commission. So hopefully this works well. I'll bring him in somewhere. Takes a second. Then he'll show up at some point. It says he's joining. <laughs> he's not there. <laughs> no, it says joining. So it's. I think we're, oh, there he is. Is that Will? Hi, Will. Can you hear us? I can. Awesome, and I can hear you. Um, so Carla and I talked a little bit about um, Mark Warden and his his um, case and what we're waiting on from the courts. And I know you um, voiced some concerns about the, the Charter Commission in general, and I thought maybe this would be a great time that you could fill us in on What's happening with the School Charter Commission? Where you think it's going? Anything nefarious that maybe we should all know about? Well, first off, uh, thanks for having me. Yes, there are some problems, uh, and I'm very concerned. Um, and I think everyone needs to tune into the Zoom meeting um, tomorrow that's scheduled at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll get you the link because um, it's going to be some tough questions. Um, the Charter Commission started off uh, at least internally, very simply with a few meetings. We had members of the school board, um, the um, school administration come in. We had members of the public come in. It was partially attended, maybe eight or nine people uh, from the public attended. The general belief amongst the people who showed up, that we also had Mantis Proud come in. And um, when I was uh, very vocal at a meeting that this isn't the Manchester Proud show. <laughs> right. Um, I'm gonna take, rate of their uh, topics and you know all of a sudden that becomes our agenda so, uh, all of us are, oh yeah well no 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 this is you know this is going to be what we want to do well um, I think it was agreed a few things are very simply that most people agree on number one not having a student who can vote say uh, that again a student have a voting position, uh, on the board uh, they can have a position but it's not going to be a voting position um, and I think everyone agreed to that, even though that was kind of something the Manchester Proud wanted. The other thing has to do with the mayor, um, whether he's an uh, ex officio member, whether she can vote, whether she can just break ties. The mayor doesn't, the mayor Craig doesn't want to be there. A lot of mayors don't want to be there. And you look at the history, many mayors did not. So what really would their, their position be? And I think a lot of people are letting, willing to let that go. Um, really the thing comes down to the crux of it is making them a taxing authority. Right. Now, before I continue there, let's backtrack a little bit to Mark Warden. A representative Mark Warden uh, followed the, the law that was written by Pat, Representative Pat Long, who's also Ward 3 Alderman, and it was caught in that had the time period for signing up was incorrect. Matt Norman, the city clerk, noticed that it was incorrect. Now, I've heard rumors, but there's been no depositions or interrogatories or anything, but I've heard rumors that um, he called either the Attorney General's office or the Secretary of State's office to say, hey, this is a problem, and, and they said, go ahead with it. Well, it's like that. I don't know whether that's accurate until I can see in writing whether someone is deposed or whatever. I won't know. Um, the, um, he went ahead with it, and Mark basically said my, my period for uh, signing up I was uh, not allowed to. He went to court. The court said, yep, no good. Sorry, throw it out. Can't have this election unless Mark is on the ballot. And within 24 hours, you couldn't uh, create new ballots. So the New Hampshire Supreme Court stepped in, and, I, and I'm okay with their decision. But basically, he said, argue this later. Go ahead with the election. And I, and I get this, and I'm okay with that. Um, they went ahead with the election, and then um, um, the kind of the, the lawsuit kind of hung out there. Wasn't sure Mark really wanted to go forward with it. And then the city of Manchester wrote a motion to dismiss. And if you read the judge's ruling, it was pretty dismissing. 
I've never, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I've seen enough lawsuits and, and rulings in my day that when you have a judge basically say the city did a really poor job in, in, in their motion, and number two, not only in the base of the motion did it say, did the judge say, Mark, you need to refile and ask for damages. It's been outlined where in law this have been given, okay, for something like this. In a footnote, he even said, Mark, well, another motion, you know, which I know has been done, asking for damages. What are the damages? I believe the damages can be some financial, but they can be other things, which would be to nullify the charter. Right. So as the Charter Commission, that has been submitted to the um, the court, so I'm sure the city will have the ability to uh, put in their own motion uh, against this. I assume, I think this is what will happen. The judge is pretty clear. He was the first one to do it. They shouldn't have this election. I think he's gonna nullify the election and then they'll go to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. So we as a Charter Commission have always been under this, this um, cloud that whatever we possibly do is gonna be nullified. And, you know, Tammy, uh, you and I were state representatives. We like to follow the, the business protocol and, and, and the procedures. And sometimes you win with the procedures, sometimes you lose. Correct. You know, you know, but you should at least follow the procedures. And my big issue is the first procedure was done wrong. The, the, the legislation was flawed. Second situation with allowing this flawed legislation to, and then the dates for the sign up was flawed. And now we have a charter commission under the cloud of a judge. Basically, you can pretty much read the read his motion to see where he's going. So then now we're back here with this thing. So we hired counsel, Dean Eggert uh, from law firm Wadley, Wadley Star, which initially I was against, and I was gonna say I wasn't gonna vote for it because I know that um, Dean uh, and his firm used to represent the city in a lot of cases in the, the school, for the school district. Okay. But they no longer have that contract, but I said, okay, let's, that's fine. So we have a meeting coming up and I get this letter which I'm not allowed to release or talk about. Which is crazy. Which, which that's my first question. Who the hell made the decision that this is attorney-client privilege in a charter commission that's supposed to be transparent, transparent to the public? I'm also going to want to know who has been talking to Dean Eggert other than the chairman. Because the content, which I can't talk about, outlines some, um, Things that could be done, and I think it is uh, out of this world crazy as to the recommendations and suggestions offered by our council. And I'm really sorry I can't talk about them because I specifically gave them two shots. You didn't answer me the first time. Can I make this document public? They didn't answer me the first time. The second one came through that no, any conversations or written document between our council and the, and the charter commission is not open to the public, which I obviously have a big problem with. I, and I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I do believe that um, uh, document uh, conversations between an attorney and in this case, the charter commission um, discussing legal strategy might not be able to be publicly disseminated but i'm not sure that that's what your letter pertains to it sounds more like these are some things that the charter commission can do even if the judge throws your commission out um so it would be interesting carla if somebody filed a 91a request to uh, yeah i was just thinking the same thing um, to see i mean what if the response with attorney be. client it's it, it'll be hard because I, it's one of those where you can't if you don't know what's in it, you can't ask for the right thing. Right. So you, you know, end up in this Kafkaesque uh, sort of hell circle. But uh, <laughs> I don't know why anything. I don't know why anything on a charter commission where we're not talking about in any individual from a human right. resource standpoint, um, are completely transparent and open to the public, Agreed. which which causes. Uh, I I I I told uh, Chairman Lopez I'm insulted. Um, and I feel betrayed by the content of the letter. Um, so it, it'll be very interesting tomorrow night 
what goes on. Um, so tomorrow night would be Wednesday night is the Charter Commission meeting? That we, okay. They're doing it via Zoom the way we're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I, I have been on a Zoom meeting. The, I'm, uh, I'm a member of the New Hampshire Electricians Board, and we did have a Zoom meeting where it was open to the public when everyone was muted. And then they could, you know, you can put it in the, in the chat. Um, I have a question. And then you know, under you, you can ask the question. And then we went into executive session, okay. which we were allowed to do on Zoom. And it basically picked everybody off who couldn't have been there. Okay. So, uh, and it does not, not allow them to come back on. So there are these protocols that, that you can do that. So I don't know. I have, like, I have the experience having done that, but we'll see how. The technology works tomorrow. How many people will be able to attend from the public standpoint? Mm -hmm. Now, my guess is this is going to be um, like the automatic meetings. This will be recorded, and then it'll be played on public television. Yeah, hopefully. So, um, I, okay. I can tell you, I've spoken to at least one other member of the commission that wants to make a motion to dismiss the commission. Okay. Um, based on some of some of these things. Um, we have a timeline situation. Um, the timeline uh, may interfere with the legislature and their inability to meet. Our timeline um, is June 15th that we really need to have something. Um, Any proposals? To follow the protocol to go to the Secretary of State, Attorney General, and then come back with any uh, changes that need to be made so we can have our final vote. Well, one of the uh, things that are being done, which I also have a problem with, because of the flawed legislation presented um, by the legislature and, and, and passed, uh, Senator D'Alessandro, who's also a member of the commission, has filed a piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. We talked about this earlier, just so you know. Change it, try to change it going backwards, which something vaguely in my mind that something happened like that with the Charter Commission years ago where something was filed and something was amended post but I think it was a little different. Maybe you can remind me. So well, we the the tax cap legislation um, on the tax cap was retroactive, um, saying that any tax caps that had been approved by the voters were covered in a piece of legislation that went forward. But that isn't exactly the same as going back and saying, "Oh, that filing period that we spelled out in law last year that screwed this all up." Yeah, we're, we're we just want to erase that now. That that's not really the same thing. Even if it would past constitutional muster, even if Senator D'Alessandro, and, and I think, I'm not even sure if um, uh, Representative uh, Long is on that one or not. But he is. Oh, he is. It's him, uh, Senator Kavanaugh, seven, Senator D'Alessandro, and Senator Susi. Just, okay, just so even if that too. does pass, I'm not even sure. I haven't looked at the docket. I don't know if you can look at the docket real quickly. Did it even pass the Senate? Is it onto the yeah, House? I, in the docket, it didn't even seem like it had had a hearing. So we're, we're, I don't expect the house isn't in session. I don't anticipate the house going back anytime soon. I, I think from what I'm hearing from pretty good sources is that the, the major issue with opening New Hampshire um, economically has to do with the um, hot spot of Massachusetts co mm -hmm. problems to our south. And we all we know should build that a wall and make Massachusetts pay for it. <laughs> we all know that. Um, what happens on holidays is everyone comes north and and you know they, they provide a lot of revenue to the state of New Hampshire um, I think the governor will open the borders and, and allow for a lot of things to go on uh, a couple of days before Memorial Day because there's no way New Hampshire cannot be open Memorial Day right I think he'll pass a couple of weeks past the May 4th um, I don't see the legislature meeting no. until the first of June now if they do meet then the question becomes, does everyone have to be have their temperature taken every day? Right. You know, all these all these other safety protocols. So I don't see us meeting the deadline, even if that legislation, which I think would be found unconstitutional if passed, um, and, and then you'd have to go, you know, possibly for an override of the governor vetoes, everything else. That timeline doesn't work. Right. With what we have to have our things done. So um, uh, I'm, there are people looking for other alternatives and um, it's how many times does something have to be painted uh, to the point where 
you know, in a comment was made to me by uh, some member of the public, well, all the hard work and effort you've done so far would be for naught. I'm like, you know. So how many times does that happen? How many times have we worked on something legislatively or, or whatever, ever, then have it be for naught? Right. The last charter commission I worked on, you put 100 hours into it. We didn't, you know, didn't like it. Uh, it was a past four to three or something like that, yep. five to four, four. And then it we would resoundingly rejected uh, by, the by, the by the voters. Oh, so, uh, you know, utilizing that excuse that well, it's a lot of time and effort that went into this. Um, well, I'm guessing on our timeline here for the show, just because I forgot to hit my timer, um, so we're, I don't want to overrun because I don't want them to shut us off on um, local access. I do appreciate that you're chiming in, and people should, uh, because we will be posting this full video on Facebook later today, um, people should definitely chime in both tonight, Tuesday, for the Aldermanic meeting, because they're going to discuss the city budget and why, in God's name, Joyce Craig thinks now is the time to increase spending and increase taxes. They're also going to talk about whether or not now is the time to guarantee pay increases for the teachers, which God love the teachers for everything they're doing, but now is not the time to increase spending. And then tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Tune, or tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock, um, tune in and um, watch or participate in the school charter commission meeting. Um, yeah, it's crazy times. I think a lot of this is happening when people aren't paying attention because they got so much else going. You know, people are teaching their kids at home. People are filing their unemployment claims. They're just going along doing their, their new day stay at home business you know, and then they're not really paying attention like they normally would. And a lot of this stuff is just going to sneak under the radar, I think. And we need to get more people involved. Um, anyways, thank, thank you for you coming. For your, thank you for your time. And um, I would appreciate if you guys would, uh, I'll get to the link and you can send to your viewers uh, the link with the Zoom link for tomorrow's uh, card meeting. And maybe you can come back next week for a few minutes and fill us in on what happened. Um, happy to. Other than that, um, it is beautiful out there today. It's going to be I think 60 on Thursday, which is Dan's birthday. So I'm going to take him out for a walk in the morning. Uh, Dan and I checked out Cedar Swamp Preserve this past Sunday. It was absolutely beautiful. There were very few people on the trails. So, and everybody was very cordial to each other. Um, get out there, check out Manchester. Um, Carla and I can both attest that there are tons of places to walk and enjoy the outdoors right here in our city of Manchester. Um, that's all. And a lot of trash to pick up. I've been out there almost every other day just with a bag picking up trash. So, you know, let's all do a little bit and let's all help. You know, let's let's really make sure that it's, you know, we're all in this together. That's right. We're all in this together, supposedly. Okay, that's all I got. Have a great Thanks, week. Everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.